Hi, in this lesson, we're gonna be creating our own drawing app with Scratch that you or someone else could use to actually create drawings with. Let's jump right in. So we're gonna be using loops, which is a programming structure that repeats one or more commands in our program today. And we're also gonna be using events. And events is something that causes or triggers something to happen in a program. And we're gonna have lots of different user inputs that will cause events to run code in our program as we make an app for people to draw with. So think about a time that you created a drawing. When was the last time that you drew something? Do you remember how you drew, what you drew? Did you use different line widths? Did you use different types of pencils or coloring supplies? How did you move your pencil? These are different ways that you would, as a programmer would need to think about how to program a drawing app. We're gonna be building a program that uses your mouse and your keyboard in order to draw. This will work with an iPad, but a little bit differently. And so you can feel free to still follow along on an iPad. The line first is gonna to need to follow the mouse pointer. So that's the first things that we're gonna to need to code in Scratch. The other things that we're gonna to need to do is to lift and lower the pen on and off the drawing canvas. And this is going to allow the user to move the mouse to different places in order to draw in different parts of the canvas. If you have time, we'll make the left and right arrows cause the line that is drawn to be thicker or thinner. So let's jump right into Scratch. If you go to the Scratch site or the Scratch app, we're gonna go ahead and click Create at the top. If you have a Scratch account, you can sign in to your account, but you don't have to in order to do this entire project. All right, so if you're logged out, you may have these tutorial windows pop up. You can go ahead and close any of them that show up. And we're first gonna go ahead and install the pen extension. This is an extra set of coding blocks that's gonna allow us to use pen features. So you'll come down here to the bottom left to this blue button, and then you're gonna find the pen extension and click on that. That automatically installs all of these extra pen blocks for us to use in our program. In addition to all these other different categories of coding blocks. What we're gonna program first is this set of initial conditions. These are initial conditions that we want to happen when we start the program, anytime we start the program. So we're gonna have an event called when this flag is clicked. This is kind of like the start button. And then we're going to have three pen blocks. One that causes the pen to be lifted up so it won't be drawing at the very beginning. Another one that will erase everything. So if we want to reset the program, we'll just restart it and erase everything that had already been drawn. And then we're going to set the pen size at the beginning as well. So in Scratch, I'm going to come over here to the events blocks. The events blocks contain all of the different events that will trigger code to happen. So I'm first going to pull over the when green flag clicked block and now I'm going to be adding my code that I want to happen when this program starts. I'm going to come back over to the pen blocks and I'm going to grab the pen up because I want to lift up the pen at the very beginning of the program. Erase all in case we're resetting any drawings that had already be done, been done before and also set pen size and we can set the pen size to something larger than one if we wanna start with a thicker line. These are our first steps. We're gonna go ahead and create a new project in Scratch, add the pen extension, and then add these first blocks, first from the events blocks, and then from the pen block. Go ahead and pause the recording and everybody set up their program in this way. Next, we're gonna add code to make the pen follow the mouse pointer. This could also be where your finger taps if you're on an iPad. So in order to do that, we're going to add something called a forever loop. This is a loop that's going to keep running over and over and over as long as this program is running forever. And inside of it, every time this loop runs, we want the drawing character, which is a cat in this case, to go ahead and follow where the mouse pointer is going. And that will cause the drawing program to follow the mouse 
and draw a line as the mouse moves. So coming over to Scratch, we're gonna be going to something called the control blocks. These control the flow of the program in Scratch. So I'm gonna drag a forever block over here, and this is my forever loop. It will start running when the start flag is clicked. And then I'm gonna come over to the motion blocks, cause this is gonna control the motion of the character who's gonna be drawing in our app. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this go to block. It starts with something called random position, but if you click the drop down, you can instead select mouse pointer. Now at this point, you can actually test your program by clicking the green flag. And if you move your mouse around, then the character, also called the sprite, is going to follow your mouse pointer around. At this point, go ahead and grab the control forever block and grab the motion go to block and change it to go to mouse pointer. Let's go ahead and pause the recording and add that code. All right, next up, we're gonna add events and pen blocks to lift the pen up or down to either make the program start or stop drawing. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more events blocks. And then I have a when key pressed block. So it starts off saying space as the default key, but I can also change it to up arrow. I can grab another one and change it to the down arrow. So these are two events that will happen. One, when the up arrow is pressed, it'll run whatever code is attached to it. And one, when the down arrow key is pressed, it will run any code blocks connected to it. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my pen blocks. And all I gotta do is grab pen up for the up arrow and pen down for the down arrow. And now when I run my program, I can test it out. Right now it starts out with the pen up, but if I press the down arrow, then we'll start to draw. And then when I press the up arrow, it will stop drawing. Okay, let's pause the recording and have everybody program the up arrow and down arrow. All right, our next code is very similar. And so if you were able to do the up and down arrow, you're now gonna do the right and left arrow. And we're gonna use these to make the pen size change to make a thicker or a thinner line that the user is drawing with. So I'm gonna stop my program and I'm gonna go ahead and again, grab two more of the same events when key pressed, because I'm now gonna to wanna to do a left and a right. So when left arrow pressed, and when right arrow pressed. And what I'm gonna do is in the pen blocks, I have a block called change pen size by, and then a number. So this is going to increase the pen size by one, and you'll see what that is when we test it out. But usually with a left arrow, you're gonna be decreasing, so I'm gonna do a minus one. And then I'm gonna keep that plus one with the right arrow. So let's go ahead and test our program. I'm gonna start my program. I'm gonna put the pen down. And now I'm gonna press the right arrow a few times. And I get a much thicker line. But if I press the left arrow, I can thin out my line to a very, very thin line. It's your turn to go ahead and add events and pen blocks to make the line thicker or thinner. All right, if you've made it this far and you still have some more time, we're going to now add some color changing. This is actually very simple. This only requires two blocks and we're gonna have the space key cause the pen color to change by a certain number. Again, you'll have to kind of play around with the numbers to see what actually happens when you change by 10. And you'll get to try out playing around with other numbers too if you'd like. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and try this now. If you've done this so far, then you're gonna be able to find these blocks yourself and change the pen color and watch it happen in your program. So at this point, go ahead and add some color changing using a when space key pressed and the change pen color by 10 block and actually go ahead and try drawing with it. You can also play around with the numbers that are in these pen blocks in order to see how your program changes when you do that. 
you may find that you can improve your program when you change some of the numbers. If you're logged into a Scratch account, your program will automatically save. If you're not logged in, you can still save your program as a file by going to File and Save to your computer. And then on another device, you can load that file from your computer to open up your program again. Congratulations, you coded your own drawing app in Scratch. And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you get to share your program and maybe some of your drawings with others and that you can continue programming more exciting apps in the future.